As you guys know, we've been giving the M1 MacBooks a lot of attention recently, especially with all of the leaks and rumors about totally redesigned 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros coming later this year with the new 12 core M1X chip that we're expecting. But as far as the Mac mini, we haven't really been showing it that much love recently. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss my thoughts on the M1 model and how it stands up to other desktop computers. And yes, I'm gonna talk about the M1X Mac Mini. But first, I wanna start off with my experience with the M1 Mac Mini over the past couple of months and why it's already a huge deal even without the M1X chip. As many of you know, Apple's M1 Mac Mini is priced at only $699 on their website or an even lower $649 on Amazon at the current sale price if you use the link down below, which is an absolutely great deal for a brand new M1 Mac. The model that we purchased was actually the $899 version since we loaded it with 16 gigs of unified memory. The reason we bought that model is because we wanted to put it up against a bunch of high-end Intel Macs to see just how good the new Apple Silicon M1 chip really is. And spoiler alert, it totally blew us away. We compared it to everything from our 12 core $15,000 Mac Pro, a $2,500 8 core 5K iMac, and a fully loaded Intel i7 Mac Mini, both with and without a 5700 XT eGPU. So let's go through some of the performance results that we got. Starting off with single core performance using Geekbench 5, the M1 Mac Mini literally beats out every previous Mac ever made. Due to the new super efficient M1 chip, which uses a totally different architecture compared to the other Macs. Now getting into multi-core, this is where the M1 Mac Mini falls behind because it's a pretty low-end chip, only having four high-performance cores, but it still beats out the Intel Mac Mini by around 32%, so that's pretty impressive considering the price difference. All of that was just raw benchmark performance, so now let's get into what actually matters, the Cinebench R23 CPU stress test. Here, the Intel Macs all get a nice boost compared to the M1 Mac Mini, but thankfully, it still outperforms the Intel model. And one important difference is that the fans on the M1 were almost whisper silent, while the Intel Mac Mini's fans were blaring at the end of the test. Now moving on to graphics performance, this is where it gets very interesting. In this chart, every single Mac that beats the M1 is using a dedicated graphics card, while both Mac Minis by themselves use graphics chips that are integrated inside of the main chip itself. And as you can see, the M1's integrated graphics is over four times as fast. This is a really big deal for the M1 Mac Mini because it finally gets decent graphics performance without requiring a dedicated GPU. And this is also what's gonna make the future M1X model so incredibly good, but more on that in just a minute. Now moving on to our Max Tech Xcode programming test, the M1 Mac Mini somehow beats every single Mac including the $15,000 Mac Pro, which we didn't think was possible. But it goes to show just how focused Apple was on optimizing their software for the new chip architecture. Now let's get into another common task, photo editing with Lightroom Classic. And by the way, this app hasn't yet been updated for Apple Silicon, so the M1 had to run it using Rosetta 2 translation. Here, the M1 wasn't that far behind the iMac, which is really impressive considering that it's practically one third of the price and the Mac Pro destroys all of them because it had 192 gigs of six channel RAM, which matters a lot for photo editing. Now getting into video editing, this is where graphics really comes in with a standard 4K H.264 export as our first test. And surprisingly, the M1 performs incredibly well, finishing four times faster than the Intel Mac Mini and even beating the eGPU and it was only 34 seconds slower than the Mac Pro. That's because the main limitation when exporting this type of footage is actually the hardware accelerators, and the M1 Mac basically has the latest and fastest ones out there. And for that same exact reason, the M1 is able to export 10-bit 42 HVC footage from a Canon R5 camera in only three minutes, completely destroying every single Intel Mac. And in the final video editing test, exporting a five minute 4.5K Red Raw clip 
Most of the Macs beat the M1 Mac Mini because neither of them have hardware acceleration for red raw footage. So they all rely mostly on graphics performance, but at least the M1 is over three times faster than the Intel Mac Mini. So with all of those tests out of the way, you can see that the 16 gig M1 Mac Mini for only $900 is an incredibly good value compared to the other Macs. Even being able to outperform the $15,000 Mac Pro in a couple of the tests, which is mind blowing. But unfortunately, there are a couple of downsides, like only having two Thunderbolt ports on the back and only supporting two displays. But thankfully, the M1X Mac Mini is gonna fix all of that, so now let's finally get into that. Now, if you're wondering why I'm so confident that we'll be seeing an M1X Mac Mini, I have a couple of different reasons. First off, there actually aren't any leaks and rumors about an M1X model, just some speculation and a whole lot of common sense and putting puzzle pieces together, so let me explain. Way back before the M1 Max were released, we basically had zero leaks and rumors about Apple releasing an M1 Mac Mini alongside the MacBooks, but it happened. And this time with the expected M1X model, there are once again, no rumors, but check out how all of these puzzle pieces come together. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but when the M1 MacBook Pro came out last year, it only replaced the base $1,300 model. Apple is actually still selling the Intel-based $1,800 model, and if you're wondering why, there are two main reasons. Number one is that Apple wants to give people options during this transition, so if someone doesn't want to switch to Apple Silicon just yet, they can get the Intel chip instead. Reason number two is because the M1 MacBook Pro model has only two ports and only supports one external display while the more expensive Intel model has four ports and supports two external displays. Now, I personally believe that the new redesigned 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M1X chip is only gonna replace the current $1,800 Intel model. And of course, that is gonna have four ports. The $1,300 base MacBook Pro model is gonna stay unchanged sticking to the M1 chip until further notice. Now here is where it gets extremely convincing for the M1X Mac Mini. Just like the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini currently has a less expensive base model with the M1 chip and a more expensive Intel-based model. Now the one thing that you need to realize is that Apple will 100% get rid of this Intel model because we know they're gonna fully transition over to Apple Silicon chips no matter what. And Apple isn't just gonna drop the Intel Mac Mini and leave it at that, they're gonna replace it with a new Apple Silicon model. And here is how I know that. Ever since 2018, the Intel Mac Minis have all come with four Thunderbolt 3 ports, even the base model. Now what's weird about the current base model M1 Mac Mini is that it's the only model in years to only come with two of these Thunderbolt supporting ports, which is definitely limiting for a lot of people, and it's probably due to a limitation with the M1 chip. Because of that reason alone, I believe that Apple absolutely must release a new Mac Mini model with four ports to replace the current Intel model just like we're expecting Apple to do with the MacBook Pros. And knowing Apple, if they do this, they're probably gonna do it all at once. So I personally expect the M1X Mac Mini to get released alongside the M1X MacBook Pros. This would make a whole lot of sense because when Apple first unveiled the M1 chip, they put it into three different Macs all at the same time. So if Apple unveils the M1X chip, they'll likely take the opportunity to put it into every Mac that they're planning to put it into all at the same time. And that is why I believe the M1X Mac Mini is coming. And as far as the release date, I initially thought it would be coming this summer, but we recently got some very bad news. Both Ming-Chi Kuo and Nikkei Asia reported that Apple has delayed the mass production of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models from May or June to sometime after July. Because of this, it's looking like these MacBook Pros and probably the M1X Mac Mini will be released sometime this fall, probably in November, since that's when the M1 Macs were released. 
Now with that said, I want to finally get into the M1X chip and why it's going to be completely groundbreaking. I believe it's going to come with a 12 core CPU and a 16 core integrated GPU, which is basically going to be the perfect chip for the Mac mini, since there really isn't that much room for a dedicated graphics chip. And if you're wondering how it's going to perform, we actually estimated the performance of the M1X in another video. So let's revisit those performance charts and see how it's going to compare to those other Macs. Single core performance is going to stay roughly the same because the M1X will simply have four more of the exact same performance cores, so no big difference there. Now for multi-core, this is where it's going to get real, with the M1X actually estimated to outperform the 12-core Mac Pro, which is incredible. Moving on to Cinebench R23, this is the most impressive part. The M1X should just barely beat out the Mac Pro, which I don't think anybody was expecting. And finally, getting into graphics performance, this is incredible because the M1X is almost 10 times more powerful than the current best Intel Mac Mini, and it should even beat out the iMac as well. So with all of that said, I think there's a pretty good chance that we'll be seeing a high-end M1X Mac Mini coming sometime this fall, probably in November. But since we haven't actually heard any rumors or seen any leaks, there's also the chance that Apple could hold off for another year if they really wanted to, but I personally think that it's coming this year. So there you guys go, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you disagree with my speculation, go ahead and comment down below. But if you enjoyed it, tap the like button and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Check out one of those two videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.